So I will talk on the post radiotherapy strictures. So what is the indication for radiotherapy in the area of uh, the, the pelvis? It's either pelvic tumors, for example, rectal cancer, which is only about 5% of the strictures. And the major reason is prostate cancer. Nowadays, the majority of patients with prostate cancer will get a radical prostatectomy. However, still around 20% will receive an external beam radiation, around 10% brachytherapy, and around 4% a combination of both. So urethral strictures are a potential late complication following radiation therapy for prostate cancer, and they are the most common late grade two or more urinary toxicity following HDR brachytherapy. And the pooled estimated prevalence is around 2.2% at a mean follow-up of two years. So what is the pathophysiology of radiotherapy? What is it doing with the tissue? You have a ionization event and production of free radicals. This leads to different types of DNA damage. Apoptosis is induced and this will lead to the cell death. It activates pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic cytokines which will lead to a vascular injury, stem cell damage, a failed wound healing, inflammation, and a fibrotic reaction. So what are the risk factors for stricture development? It's the radiotherapy modality. I will come back to that a little bit later. Then the dose per fraction and the age of the patient and previous intervention like prior TURP. So here are listed the long-term risk, and you may see that for external beam radiation, it's 2 to 3%, for brachytherapy, 2 to 12%, and highest for the combination of brachytherapy and external beam radiation, 11 to 32%. A recent publication on the right side uh, was based on CM Medicare data, and you see that in this recent publication, external beam radiation uh, had a higher risk than previously described. The medium time to symptomatic stricture formation, according to the literature, is two years. Localization and length, over 90% are in the bulbo membranous urethra, and the length is usually 2.5 to 3 centimeters. How to diagnose? And it's absolutely important to have a combination of a retrograde urethrogram with avoiding cystogram. As you may see here in this picture, here, here is the sphincter. And you clearly can see that this stricture here is clearly away from the external sphincter in the area of the bulbar urethra. And in this patient, it's completely different. You see this patient had a seat implantation and you see the stricture is within the prosthetic urethra and is reaching down into the sphincter area. And this is very important uh, if you consider later on the treatment options. So let's face some general considerations you have a urethral tissue damage due to the radiation. So that means you have reduced healing capacity. You may have already a sphincter insufficiency because the majority of these patients already had either a radical prostatectomy or a TURP prior to radiation therapy. And as we learned, radiotherapy itself may have harm to the, uh, to the external sphincter. And be careful, some of these patients have something, we call it pseudocontinence, because they already had an incontinence prior to stricture formation, then they get the, uh, the stricture, and because of the obstruction, they develop continence. So it's a pseudocontinence. If you uh, treat the stricture, the patient will be incontinent afterwards. 
And in addition, especially in those patients who had an external beam radiation, you may have bladder tissue damage, and this may lead to reduced bladder capacity. So this patient collective has a high risk per se for recurrency and incontinence. So what are the treatment options? We have endoscopic interventions, dilations, then the internal urethrotomy, and of course, now we have, in addition, the drug diluting balloon. It's a Paclitaxel coated balloon. And the first data coming out of the trials in the barbarurethra seem promising. However, there's no data available in irradiated patient. So I put a question mark behind it. You should keep in mind that dilation is doing less harm than DVIU especially if you have an intrasphincteric sphincter uh, 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 stricture, if you dilate, then you will not make any harm to the external sphincter. And you have different types for open reconstruction. You can make a stricture incision and a primary anastomosis, a buccal mucosa craft urethroplasty, or a flap reconstruction. And primary excision and Anastomosis means to mobilize in distal and proximal direction. And as I said, these strictures are close to the sphincter, so they might do harm to the uh, external sphincter. And be careful in patients who already had a radical prostatectomy, because they already had an anastomosis just a little bit above. And if you do a second end-to-end -end anastomosis, you leave uh, at least a two centimeter piece or one centimeter piece of urethra in between, which will be not very uh, good uh, uh, with the blood supply. Buccal mucosa urethroplasty is less mobilization. However, you need a well vascularized bed. And this is an example of an older child. You see the, the nice tissue here. And this you normally don't have in an irradiated patient. And you just have seen in the previous presentation how difficult it is to make a flap reconstruction for the bulba urethra. It means an extensive mobilization and uh, already the diverticular formation was mentioned. So what is the outcome? The success rate after five years for dilation or DVIU is zero for brachytherapy and 20% for external beam Red, uh, external beam radiotherapy. Mean time to recurrence 3.7 months after brachytherapy and 26 months after external beam radiation. And Brandes followed as successive urethrotomy or dilation is short lived and palliative. 80% of patients require repeat treatment and most more than three times. But on the other hand, as I said, this is not doing at least dilatation much harm. So uh, it has to be considered in older patients or patients who have an intrasphincteric uh, stricture. So what is the outcome of urethroplasty? And when you look to the literature, and that is an overview of what was published before 2015, you see very small series, different types of radiotherapy, and different types of urethroplasty. And you see here, perineal urethrostomy was included. Here, patient with fistula and not bulbar strictures. And these 66 patients from three centers, and also these 30 patients from three centers. So very small, inhomogeneous groups, and therefore the success rate was in between 50 to 95%. And this was depending on the type of urethroplasty. Concerning the incontinence, de novo incontinence was described in between 7 to 50%, and this was independent of type of urethroplasty. This is a more recent publication from Keith Rook. You see 35 patients. The majority had an end-to-end -end anastomosis, one-third grafts of lap. But look to this here. Uh, there is a bias in because those who received the graft of lab had a longer a stricture. And therefore, the success rates are not comparable because for the so shorter strictures with end-to-end -end anastomosis, it was 91%. And for the more complex strictures, 75%. 
and mean time to recurrence was 29.8 months. And de novo or incontinence or worsening of pre-existing incontinence was at least in one third of the patient. Risk factor was previous TURP. This is uh, also um, a recent publication uh, from 10 centers, again, 137 patients. If you divide that uh, through 10, you will end up with uh, just a handful of patients per center. Success rate similar to what we just have seen, end-to-end -end anastomosis over 90%, grafts and flaps do a little bit worse, but again, here might be exactly the same bias. As we say in Germany, paper is patient, or in other words, what is written means not that it is really true. Factors associated with the recurrence were increasing patients' age and, com age and combined mo uh, modality radiotherapy in the univariate analysis, and in a multivariate analysis, again, increasing patients' age and also stenosis length. And subsequent AMS implantation, artificial sphincter implantation, uh, this was necessary in 21.9%. So I would like shortly to show our own data. We focused exclusively on buccal mucosa urethroplasty and we used, in addition to a retrospective analysis, also the USS PROM. We um, analyzed 47 patients and as you see, main indication as it's described in the literature for radiotherapy was prostate cancer. Um, the majority of those patients received an external beam radiation. Um, brachytherapy were altogether 13 patients and one patient had a HIFU. Here are the baseline characteristics and you see these patients are sick. Quite a high percentage has, uh, in addition to the prostate cancer, diabetes, coronary heart disease or hypertension, and thus they are on antiplatelets and anticoagulants, which is also not very good as a local condition. Uh, operative characteristics, at least half of the patient had a previous radical prostatectomy, two thirds at least one DVIU, but only 4.2% a previous urethroplasty. And here are our data at a medium follow-up of 44 months. And you see that, uh, that the success rate was only 67% and median time to recurrence three months. And when we compare that to the whole collective and you see the Kaplan-Meier curves of the 534 one-staged anterior urethroplasties we performed with using buccal mucosa, you see here the curves for the initial buccal mucosa and for the repeated buccal mucosa and those Secondary, all three curves are much better, at least than what we have seen in the irradiated group. Just one slide uh, with respect to the PROMS. Um, you see here those patients facing problems and the irradiated patients had almost no problems concerning mobility, self-care and usual activities. However, at least 40% had some pain and discomfort and also 13% anxiety and depression. And concerning incontinence, the total mean ICIQ sum score was 9.8, which means moderate incontinence. And we have seen a severe incontinence in those patients uh, after radical prostatectomy, almost in half of those patients, and in 20% after TURP and an AMS 800 um, was uh, necessary in 26 patients. So this is a recent um, meta-analysis and review. Only retrospective studies were included, altogether 257 patients. Uh, again, the majority had an external beam uh, radiotherapy. What we already know, the majority have bulbar uh, membranous strictures. And again, two thirds were treated with uh, end to end anastomosis uh, and only one third with graft or flaps. This is, let's, let's, let's say, a review of the literature. Median follow up uh, is 10 to 55.5 uh, uh, 50, uh, months, and the pooled success rate 
in this meta-analysis was 80%, and the subsequent uh, stress urinary incontinence, 19%. So to summarize, radiation-induced strictures are in 95% due to prostate cancer. The location is in over 90% in the bulbar membranous urethra. Risk factors are radiation therapy modality, dose, age, and prior TURP. For diagnosis, a combined VCOG and retrograde urethrogram is essential. Endoscopic treatments have a low success rate, repeated intervention. However, as mentioned, dilation is doing not much harm. Urethroplasty, there are only publications with mostly small and inhomogeneous collectives. The success rates are in between 50 to 90 percent. The pooled success rate is 80 percent, and it seems that end-to-end uh, -end anastomosis is doing better than grafts and flaps. However, a bias is here with respect to the length of the stricture. Success rates are lower than in unirradiated patients, and the de novo incontinence can be expected in 7 to 50 percent, and pooled, it is around 19%. So you need to discuss uh, these data with the patient. It is an individual decision. A patient who was already incontinent before he developed his stricture and is continent with the stricture might be best treated with a suprapubic cystostomy. The one who is continent and once uh, have no harm to his continents, maybe is best treated with repeated dilations. Those who want to have a urethroplasty have to know that they are at risk to get a recurrent stricture and are at a high risk also to be incontinent afterwards, meaning that they need a secondary sphincter implantation. And those patients really have to be treated at a center for urethral reconstruction. Thank you for your attention.